Imagine two farmers, Joe and Hank, each claiming to grow the best rice in America. Picture Joe, a tall, lanky man with a sunburnt smile, who was convinced that his rice was so fluffy it could give clouds a run for their money. Now think of Hank, a burly, bearded behemoth, who believed his rice was so plump it could make other grains turn green with envy. In the heartlands of America, this was the stuff of legends. Two rivals, each vying for the title of Rice King, sparing no effort to outdo the other. Their competitive spirit was as fertile as the fields they tended, pushing them to employ some of the most inventive and hilarious tactics. Scarecrows in their fields were not just bird deterrents. They morphed into pranksters by nightfall, causing all sorts of mischief. Watering cans would mysteriously run dry, leaving one to wonder if there was a secret rice thief or if the cans were just parched from the summer heat. Even the chickens weren't spared. They were covertly trained to peck at the competitors' crops, although the birds proved to be more interested in chasing bugs than grains. But it wasn't all pranks and sabotage. On a deeper level, it was about pride, passion, and the pursuit of perfection. It was about two men who loved their work, who respected the land and the bounty it provided, who wanted to be the best, not just for bragging rights, but for the satisfaction of knowing they had given their all. Yet, as in any epic tale, there comes a twist, a moment that changes the course of the story, a turn of events that our heroes didn't see coming. Their rivalry, however, was about to take a turn they never expected. The stage was set for a challenge of epic proportions, a showdown that would forever change the landscape of their lives and the fields they held dear. Enter a wily traveling salesman who saw an opportunity amidst the rivalry. A man of vision, he was akin to a fox who just spotted a pair of chickens squabbling over a golden egg. He surveyed the scene, a glint of cunning in his eyes. The feud between Joe and Hank was not just a simple spat between farmers, it was an opportunity, a golden ticket if you will. He approached the farmers with a proposition that was as tantalizing as a fresh apple pie cooling on a windowsill. A competition judged by the entire town to finally settle once and for all who grew the best rice in the heartlands of America. Joe and Hank, their chests puffed out like roosters on the dawn patrol, accepted the challenge. They shook hands with the salesman, their grip as firm as their resolve. The salesman, a Cheshire cat grin spreading across his face, knew he'd struck gold. With the challenge set, Joe and Hank went about preparing their fields for the competition of a lifetime. Their rivalry, now more heated than ever, sparked a frenzy of activity. They sang to their rice, they danced with their scarecrows, they employed every trick in the farming handbook. At night, you could see them, silhouetted against the moon, working tirelessly in their fields. And let's not forget the pie incident. In a move that was part desperation, part genius, they tried to sway the judges with homemade pies. But the pies, much like their hopes of an easy victory, disappeared before reaching their intended recipients. As the day of the competition drew closer, their fervor reached fever pitch. The town buzzed with anticipation. The air was thick with excitement. The stage was set. The players were ready. With their egos on the line, Joe and Hank were ready to give it their all. As the harvest approached, the air was thick with tension. It was as if the whole town was holding its breath, waiting for the great showdown between Joe and Hank. The heartlands of America had never seen a rivalry this intense, this grainy. In the final days leading up to the harvest, our two farmer gladiators pulled out all the stops. Joe, with his fluffy cloud rice, sang to his crops in a voice so sweet, not even the crows dared to interrupt him. Hank, on the other hand, danced with his scarecrows under the moonlight, his plump grain rice swaying in rhythm with the cool night breeze. It was a spectacle to behold. Two men, so committed to their cause, so determined to prove their worth, that they turned farming into a performance art. It was as if the fields had become their stage, the scarecrows their audience, and the harvest their grand finale. But the drama didn't stop there. Oh no, my friends. Joe and Hank, in their desperation to win, tried to sweeten the deal, quite literally. The judges, who were just ordinary townsfolk, started receiving homemade pies at their doorsteps. Pecan pies, apple pies, blueberry pies, you name it. Now who doesn't like a good pie? But these pies came with a catch. They were not just pies. They were, 
let's say, persuasive pastries, doughy diplomats, crusty ambassadors of goodwill. But alas, these pies never reached their intended recipients. As it turned out, the town had a mysterious pie thief on the loose, a rogue with a sweet tooth. Some say it was the town's mischievous dog, Biscuit, who had developed a taste for pie. Others claimed it was Old Man Jenkins, the town's resident pie enthusiast. But the truth, my friends, remains a mystery. All we know is that the pies disappeared, leaving behind nothing but empty pie tins and a lingering scent of cinnamon and regret. So with their pie-based bribery plans foiled, Joe and Hank had no choice but to rely on their rice. They toiled day and night, nurturing their crops, whispering words of encouragement to each grain, and hoping against hope that their efforts would bear fruit. Or rather, rice. Now you might be thinking, this is just rice, what's the big deal? But to Joe and Hank, and to the people of this little town, it was more than just rice. It was a symbol of their hard work, their dedication, their pride. It was a testament to their love for the land and their unwavering belief in the magic of nature. As the final days dwindled down to mere hours, the anticipation reached a fever pitch. The townsfolk watched, wide-eyed and hopeful, as Joe and Hank put their heart and soul into their crops. The two farmers, once bitter rivals, now shared a common goal, a common dream. They had transformed their feud into a spectacle of perseverance and passion. The day of reckoning was at hand. The stage was set, the players were ready, and the heartlands of America held its breath, preparing for the epic battle of the grains. The entire town turned out for the harvest, eagerly awaiting the results. The air was thick with anticipation, as if the earth itself was holding its breath. The sun rose, casting a golden glow over the fields, where our two farmers, Joe and Hank, stood shoulder to shoulder, the tension between them palpable. The judges, those esteemed experts of everything grain-related, descended upon the fields like a flock of hungry seagulls. They scrutinized every stalk, every grain, every husk, with the intensity of a hawk eyeing its prey. The townsfolk watched in hushed silence as the judges murmured amongst themselves, their faces as unreadable as a scarecrow's. The moment of truth arrived. The head judge, a grizzled veteran of many a harvest, stepped forward. His voice echoed across the fields. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision. The crowd leaned in, straining to hear. It's a, it's a tie, he announced, his voice rising in disbelief. A collective gasp swept through the crowd, followed by a ripple of laughter. A tie, in a contest of this magnitude? It was as unexpected as a chicken laying a square egg. But there it was. Joe and Hank's rice was so evenly matched, not even the most discerning of palates could differentiate between them. The farmers themselves stood in stunned silence. A tie? They had prepared for victory, braced for defeat. But a tie? It hit them like a well-aimed water balloon. Unexpected and a little bit hilarious. And then, something wonderful happened. Amidst the laughter and the disbelief, Joe and Hank looked at each other. And they laughed. They laughed like two old friends who had just shared the best joke in the world. Their rivalry, their pranks, their desperate attempts to outdo each other, it all seemed so silly now. And in that moment, amidst the golden fields and the laughter, they realized something profound. They were not rivals, but comrades, each striving to grow the best rice they could. No one could have predicted this outcome. But there it was, as clear as the blue sky above them, and as unexpected as a tie in a rice-growing competition. In the aftermath of the tie, Joe and Hank found themselves at a crossroads. There they stood, in the midst of their golden fields, with the echoes of the judge's announcement still ringing in their ears. It's a tie, they had proclaimed, as a collective gasp swept across the crowd. The two farmers, once bitter rivals, now stood shoulder to shoulder, staring at the endless expanse of their identical, impeccable crops. The realization struck them as suddenly as a bolt of lightning. The competition had, in fact, been a journey of discovery, a journey that led them to a truth they hadn't expected. Their rivalry had evolved into a friendship as strong and as steady as the sturdy rice stalks that surrounded them. You see, in their pursuit of supremacy, they had inadvertently fostered a bond, a bond forged in the heat of competition, tempered by the sweat of their brows and strengthened by the shared love for their craft. They had gone from trying to outwit each other with prankster scarecrows and mysteriously dry watering cans 
to standing together as equals, their individual triumphs merging into a shared victory. It was in that moment that they made a decision, a decision that would change the course of their lives and the future of their farms. They decided to hang up their gloves of rivalry and don their hats of camaraderie. No longer would they be adversaries, but allies. They chose to work side by side, not as competitors, but as comrades in the noble quest of producing the finest grains in all of the USA. And let me tell you, the transformation was as remarkable as it was heartwarming. The fields that once bore the marks of their rivalry now flourished under their combined efforts. The scarecrows stopped being pranksters and resumed their duty as guardians of the crops. The watering cans were always full and the chickens, well, they were just happy to peck at their own grains. As they shook hands, their faces beaming with newfound respect and friendship, the townsfolk erupted in applause. It was as if the entire town breathed a sigh of relief. The era of rivalry was over and a new era of companionship had begun. And so amidst laughter and camaraderie, they set off into the sunset, ready for whatever the next harvest season would bring. Together, they looked forward to the challenges and the joys that lay ahead, knowing that as long as they had each other, their fields would always be filled with abundance and joy. And the rice, well, it continued to be so fluffy and plump, it made both clouds and other grains green with envy.